So we talked about some of the cool things you can do in No Man's Sky in the past. One of the recent videos uh, was really appreciated by you guys, so I'm glad that uh, it's something that you guys are still enthusiastic about, about the fact that you're still playing the game and having fun in it. And that is why in this video, I'm gonna talk about 10 more awesome things that you can still do in No Man's Sky in 2020. So let's jump in it, and as always, a thumbs up on this video would be super appreciated. I'm also doing a big giveaway for a 2020 game, so if you didn't get a chance to check it out yet, to go ahead and follow the links in the description box and in about two weeks from this point i'm going to announce the winner here on this channel as well as via the email address provided and again a huge shout out to instant gaming for helping me set these giveaways up let's begin with a feature that i've come to appreciate even more now that i've played the older versions of the game that didn't actually have it of course in this case i'm talking about our own player hub the space anomaly as a matter of fact this wasn't even a player hub at least until the beyond update before that it was some Something completely different it was still something that us players would visit from time to time but it was for completely different reasons mostly for story purposes back then but during the beyond update I am glad that hello games actually repurposed this into an actual player hub and it contains quite a lot of goodies to the point that this has to be my most used feature in 2020 so there's a lot of pluses here that I could name mainly the ease of access you can simply pull up your quick menu and summon the space anomaly at any location or almost any location but once you do that you can go in and get access to an instant lobby with many other players from all corners of the universe so you really have to appreciate that player meetup is easier than ever before you can go in and talk to other players you can even trade with them nowadays as in you can either request resources from them and somebody might feel generous and give them to you or you might do the same to somebody else in need you can also go in and do quests and events together either you can start a quest and wait for from somebody else to join you in or you can do the same with somebody else's quest and not just that once you do that you get some really nice rewards that will give you access to for example character skins some of which look really interesting and really cool you can also get access to player base parts like aquariums statues robotic companions for your base and a ton of other things in there that are still so very useful and I'm finding most of my time spent on the space anomaly like this is the place where you get and unlock most of the upgrades in the game for your multi-tool, your ship, your character, your base and also let's not forget about the fact that you have easy access to other players bases that happen to be on the space anomaly and also to the ones that Hello Games might be featuring from time to time. Let's move over to the second awesome thing you can do in No Man's Sky in 2020 and if you can believe that you can actually become an industrial tycoon in this game as long as of course you have the resources necessary to become something like this but this became one of my favorite end game activities even though it's not something that I actually need doing but I just enjoy doing it maybe some of you can relate to this but sometimes you might start a small project and slowly add to it and make it more ambitious and before you realize it you end up with something like this a mega facility that earns you billions every single day and you don't even actually have to do anything with this you just go in mind your business go in and explore other parts of the universe or maybe unlock other things Things that you might be missing and this thing will continue working in the background of course assuming that you set it up properly moving on to number three even though this does sound obvious I don't think I ever fully covered VR in this game but I have to appreciate the heck out of hello games for the way they actually handled it mostly because there's so many things that were made intuitive and it's all done in a non disruptive way first of all you experience VR and non VR from pretty much the same game client it's just a matter of choosing an option when you're launching the game. Second of all, and something that I consider to be nothing short of a miracle, is the fact that Hello Games managed to implement all of this without having us sacrifice our progression. In fact, you can continue with the same save file, but on your end, it looks like nothing more than changing hardware from keyboard and mouse or controller to a VR headset. And let me tell you this, there's nothing like experiencing the game with a new pair of eyes, no pun intended. Like the first time you switch on your multi-tool, you get to see it in ways you never could before in the regular gameplay. You get to interact with the environment and with your items and your ships in ways that you never could find possible in the past. Furthermore, the game never separates different types of people who are using different types of hardware, so the same people with keyboard and mouse, controllers and VR headsets 
can meet each other in the same medium. So you can go in the space anomaly and the result sometimes can be quite hilarious. But here we are in 2020 and you can do all of this within the same game client. Moving on to number four, did you know that you can actually access any of the old versions of the game? Of course, this only works on the Steam version, so PS4 and Xbox players. Unfortunately, I don't think there's a method to do that over there, but for Steam users, there's a nice way to do this using the Steam Developer Console as well as Steam Database since Steam compiles all of the updates that a game ever receives. So I'm going to go over the necessary steps to do this, but you will also find them in written format in the comment section down below so you can easily follow them. But again, it all starts with opening up the console and in order to do that, press window R to run this command right here, Steam Open Console, you can copy and paste it from the comment section down below or from the description box and this will open and give you access to the Steam Developer Console. Once you're inside of it, you're going to need to do a bunch of commands. In this case, it's going to be download underscore depot. Now for finding the proper updates, we will need to use Steam Database in order to find their actual IDs. So open up the web and search for Steam Database No Man's Sky. This is going to bring you to this page right here and we're mainly going to use three sections over here and three IDs. The first one is going to be the main app ID for the game which is this one right at the top. The second one is going to be the No Man's Sky Content Depot ID which is the one right here. In the Depot section you can find it right next to the No Man's Sky Content. This is going to be the second one that you'll need to copy and paste somewhere and the third one is right inside of the Depot. So enter the No Man's Sky Content by pressing on the link. This is going to bring you to a brand new page and the final one is going to be found in the manifest. Here is where you can find all the manifests for all of the updates and patches that have ever been released for No Man's Sky since, well, 2016. And from here, all is left is for you to cross-reference the dates corresponding to these manifests to the actual updates. So, for example, if I were to choose 26 October 2016, that would correspond to Update 1.1 Foundation that was released back then. So once I got all of these three IDs written down, I would go back into my console in Steam and I would write this down. Download underscore depot followed by the app ID, followed by the depot ID, and then followed by the final manifest. And once I would press enter, this would start downloading the actual uh, version of the game that I just pointed the console towards. And once everything is downloaded, I can just go into my main Steam folder into Steam Apps, and then content. This is the folder where the actual app is downloaded as. And uh, once you navigate all the folders, you will see that this contains uh, what you can expect from the main No Man's Sky folder. So from here on, you can simply copy and paste all of these files where you actually downloaded your No Man's Sky game. And that's basically it. Just be sure that you're making some backups before doing all of this. Moving on to number 5, you can create music in No Man's Sky in 2020 if you can believe that and this is all thanks to a very recent update that we got just a few months ago. Um, this introduced of course the Byte Beat machine that looks pretty much like this and it actually lets you create music for the very first time in No Man's Sky thanks to the use of the logic system and of course all of these amazing Byte Beat machines. Now I am no expert at this and there's definitely some people out there who are very talented and they managed to create some really inspiring tracks but uh, if you are one of those people who are inspired and who do know what they're doing when it comes to synthesizers and you know just musical notes and creating music in general this might just be the feature for you since you have so much control over it there's so many things you can adjust in it and furthermore you can even chain these together to create some really impressive tracks moving on to number six some of you guys asked me in one of my previous videos how did I manage to get so close on foot to a a black hole and to my surprise not many of you knew that there's actually a fleet system in No Man's Sky probably new players out there but yes you can actually command your own fleet in No Man's Sky which was something that was added like a couple of years ago so it's pretty easy the game points you towards it anyway if you follow the main storyline eventually you will get a freighter and of course if you also do the missions for the freighter 
and um, yeah just follow over there all the guides you are also going to come in contact with uh, many of these frigates that you can recruit for your actual fleet and uh, it's not just that you can actually go in and land on many of these frigates and all of them will give you some nice little goodies over there so when you land on them their captain will give you you know certain materials that you might need sometimes they might just you know greet you when you go in and land but the best part about these outside of of course having them sent into missions and then giving you a lot of resources and money in the process is that you can also land on them and all of these will have exterior so you can basically walk in space on their platforms which is really nice that is how I managed to get this shot right here with me being almost inside of a black hole so the easiest process in this case is to just go as close as possible as you can to a black hole summon your entire fleet over there and then just land on the frigate that is closest to the black hole and then well just basically play around it maybe take some cool screenshots it's just unfortunate that when you jump inside of it it's not going to pull you in and throw you on the other side of the universe moving on to number seven another awesome thing about no man's sky is the fact that we have a pretty good character customizer it's not like it's fully detailed like how it is in certain mmorpgs out there but it still gives you plenty of options which are expanded upon time and time again thanks to all of these updates that hello games keeps bringing but there's quite a nice selection of options over here from race to body measurements there's also quite a number of armor parts that we can pick from and recently we got uh, a nice set of jetpack trails which I'm going to admit look pretty damn sweet so hopefully we're gonna get more of these in the future and more armor sets to pick from and the same thing could be said about our exocrafts we do have some options over there for colorings for decals for the jetpack trails but um, I wish this was the case for ships too so hopefully this is going to follow suit sometimes in the near future because there's more and more you know hints that this might very well be happening moving on to 8 while this isn't like a breakthrough or anything it's not like a feature that will tremendously help you in your journeys I do like the option of having mounts in this game actual player mounts that you can use at almost any given time and as long as you find a creature of a decent size you can go in and pretty much ride it the same can be said about your friends you can pretty much go in and uh, tame all of these wild beasts and kind of start a wild party together go in and just ride your horses or creatures whatever you tamed and kind of have fun a little bit over there in the wild um, again nothing that completely changes the way you play the game but it's nice to have the option moving on to number nine you might be surprised that there's quite a rich and intriguing lore behind everything that is happening in no man's sky and this is in part due to the fact that hello games took great inspiration from the old 80s and 70s sci-fi books you know space sci-fi books that sometimes are pretty difficult to wrap your mind around but even in this case there's a lot of reasons for why the universe in No Man's Sky is the way it is, for the things that are happening, um, all of these civilizations that exist in it, you know, kind of have a background story and there is this conflict that is going on over there, there's a reason for why the universe is moving in the direction it is moving into. I'm not going to spoil anything because the last time I did this, a lot of people got pissed, so I'm going to leave you guys at it, but, uh, you know, unfortunately most of this lore is told through text, so for that reason, not that many players might be engaged with this sort of thing but once you do kind of get into it and start visiting those abandoned outposts when you start you know following the main storyline visiting those ghost stations talking with various npcs and alien creatures that exist in the game you are going to start finding more about the game about the atlas about the universe and uh, it is a really interesting story to see it from all of these different perspectives i'm just gonna leave it at that but the lore in no man's sky is actually intriguing when you start Start sitting back and start reading into it anyway on a final note the last awesome thing that I'm gonna bring you guys is well you guys the community the no man's sky fans that are still playing the game to this day and mostly this comes in the form of all of those crazy bases that many of you guys are building so this is the 10 spot onto this list you can build and well visit other players bases in the universe of no man's sky now the thing about this is that recently I started exploring 
exploring ps4 bases that a lot of you guys have created and i'm not going to lie the ps4 scene is much better than the one on the pc version of the game i'm not entirely sure how xbox players are doing but ps4 has some of the craziest bases i have ever seen in my life and honestly this is even more impressive when you consider the fact that they don't have access to many of the cheating tools that pc players have like for example the blender plugin that lets you kind of create any base you want by just inputting a bunch of commands and strings over there again this has been no man's sky these are just 10 of the awesome things that you can do in it right now in 2020 but of course there are way more than this anyway i hope you guys enjoyed this video as always if you did a like and subscribe would be super appreciated and i'm gonna see you guys in the next one